If you're thinking of hiring a coach, but you don't really know what to expect, I'm going to share with you in this episode a little bit more about what you can expect from a coaching session. Welcome back to the Freelancers Tea Break, the short and sweet podcast you can enjoy whilst you're making a cuppa. And this week, I'm going to be talking about what to expect from a coaching session. Um, And a big part of that is it is International Coaching Week this week. And I'm about eight years into my coaching um, career. I trained when my little boy um, was just a few months old and he's coming up to his ninth birthday. So it's kind of bonkers to think it's been that long. And there's so much I've learned over that time. But one of the questions I do get is, what's a coaching session like? So I thought it might be useful to share what kind of process you might go through with most coaches. Um, But this is more my process, but it is a similar one to what a lot of coaches will be doing. So first of all, the most important thing to do is as a coach, having a discovery call with a potential client. So the reason being is, um, for, well, for me, a discovery call means that I can find out a bit more about the client, what their needs are, if I can actually help, because I don't want to work with someone just because they're looking to hire someone. Um, I want to make sure the fit's there and I can actually help them. Um, so that is quite an important factor. There's also a bit there about like the chemistry between you, how comfortable you feel with each other and working out whether it's a good fit. So it's like an interview for both of you, but it's very relaxed, very friendly. um, And it just gives you an idea if this is something that you want to do together. Most of the time, once people have booked a discovery call, they've already kind of made the decision that they are ready to be coached or they're looking to do it. And they maybe want to find out a bit more information or get that chemistry idea. So that's the first step, that discovery call. If off the back of that, they decide to move forward, then there's kind of the onboarding process, which for me means um, sending them the link to book in their coaching session or coaching sessions, depending on um, what package they go for. There's I use a tool called Dubsado, which means that they um, can book their time, they can pay their invoice. Um, I also do work with some access to work people, which means that the invoice comes afterwards, but um, that's for another session. Um, And then it will send them a questionnaire. And this questionnaire is quite a thorough questionnaire that will go through a lot more information, which means that when we get to that coaching session, we can just jump straight in and dive into the deep stuff. And I've got a good background of their career and maybe some of their challenges and maybe some of their goals. Um, So it means you get a much better effective use of the time. So that's the discovery call, then the onboarding. And then what about the actual session? Well, this does depend on whether it's going to be a one-off session or a series of um, coaching sessions. Um, But generally, um, if I'm going for a series of coaching sessions with somebody, that first session will be getting really clear on what they want to achieve over the period of time that I'll be working with them. I often will do something called the Wheel of Life, which looks at how satisfied they are and fulfilled in different areas of their life. If they're not quite sure what the problem is because sometimes you'll get someone who comes to you and they feel unfulfilled they don't feel energized by their work or they just are not feeling happy with their life but they can't put their finger on what and that wheel of life exercise is such a brilliant one for digging more into that um but it will generally be an hour an hour and a half of getting to know each other i will find out a lot more about what you want to achieve and then ideally, by the end of that first session, we'll have an idea of where you want to be at the end of all the sessions and some next steps to achieve that. So this is where it depends very much on how the client is, how they work best. So, so for example, um, I have a client who is very self-motivated um, or deals very well with motivation for others, like accountability. The way that I will work with them will be quite different to, say, if I work with an ADHD client where the motivation and the dopamine isn't there always to um, keep them motivated and on track. The ways that I will work with them will be very different and very much adapted to each client. So it's very much customised to each client's experience. I think one thing I want to make very clear is the difference between a mentor and a coach. So with a coach, you are, well, actually, let's explain a mentor first. A mentor advises you based on their own experience. Um, And it's a really great way 
of getting more knowledge and finding out a bit more about how to work in a business, but it is based on their own experiences. Coaching is more about facilitating a space so that you can discover what's best for you. So I do have a bit of crossover with both purely because I have so many resources for freelancers, but in a coaching session, generally, I tend to be asking questions and um, getting my client to sit with their own answers and ideally come up with their own solutions because if somebody gives you advice that advice is based on their own experiences so it's not really customer advice for you it's customer advice from them if you come up with your own solution by exploring all the options putting yourself in other people's shoes all that kind of thing lots of coaching exercises that can really, really help you to come up with the best solution that you are more likely to work through because it's you've created it, you've designed it. One thing that my coaching clients initially can find a bit odd is, first of all, being the sole subject of the hour, hour and a half, where all of the questions are about them and their experience. And sometimes people can feel like they're being selfish because they're using up all the time on them. So that takes a little adjustment. There's also some silence built into coaching sessions in terms of I might ask a question and they might answer and there might be a few moments of silence after they've answered. And I like to leave that silence where possible because sometimes there's more or there's deeper stuff. And by verbally processing things and talking things out loud, people might dig a bit deeper. And by having that space that we don't generally have in real life, it allows you to dig a bit deeper deeper so a mentor will tell you what to do a coach will help you work through things and help you tell yourself what to do but for me there is a little bit of element of both so if I might have a client who is really struggling with a technical problem we might brainstorm some ideas together but again it won't be I it won't be me saying you have to use this tool it might be them saying what all their needs are and I'll say okay well these tools fulfill some of that here have a look at some of these options and then it's down to the client to decide on it so that's kind of what a traditional coaching session will be be working through things asking questions delving into a problem and looking for solutions and at the end hopefully you will have a goal or ideally three goals Um, tasks that you need to do to achieve that goal and some deadlines. I also like to build in rewards because I think that's really important to build in the rewards and acknowledge what you've achieved. Um, But also working out what roadblocks you might hit on the way, whether it's a lack of motivation, getting sick, all these kinds of things. That's kind of a traditional coaching session. I also do Voxer coaching, which is a lot more accountability. It will be more... um, so Voxer coaching is voice and text. So it's a bit like WhatsApp, but the really key difference is when I'm sending a message, um, that person can hear me recording it live and vice versa. So it makes the conversation flow so much faster. Um, and I have a lot of clients who want to do that to check in twice weekly, um, Mondays and Fridays to decide where they're going to go forward with things and keep on track. Um, and I have other clients who want to do sort of half an hour every week to work on a particular project and dive into it in a less formal way than a Zoom coaching call. So those are some of the ways. And then afterwards, I tend to send um, coaching notes and any useful resources. And if it's on Zoom, they get a recording of it as well so that they get all of the access um, that they need. So that kind of gives you an idea of what a coaching session involves. There's lots of exercises that we can do in it, not physical, as in coaching exercises too reframe things and see things from a more optimistic point of view or to be able to find out what the root cause of some of these things is a common thing that a lot of people deal with are limiting beliefs so beliefs that they have that have stopped them progressing so even down to um i will never earn more than x amount or um asking or raising my rates is greedy and These are all limiting beliefs that can stop us growing our businesses. So these are all things that I help my clients with as well, as well as very practical things like how to find clients, um, marketing, launches, all those kind of things. 
So I hope that was useful. If you have any questions, do pop them below. I'll have all the details of my coaching packages below as well. But this is kind of similar to a lot of coaching. This is what I was taught when I had my coaching training. Um, most coaches will go through some kind of process like this with you. Um, and yeah, I hope it was useful. Have a wonderful freelance week. Mm -hmm.